Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, we're going to look at the anatomy of a pig's heart. I have a, a few pig's hearts, pig hearts here. There's my little tray of hearts um, and some parts. And I'm going to go through the anatomy of this organ. Um, so this is a pig heart. And right now you're looking at the front of the pig heart. Pig heart. This would be the anterior ventral surface. Surface ventral is more appropriate for the pig, obviously. Um, first, the gross anatomy on the outside of the heart. Again, this is the front. That makes this larger area here um, the left ventricle. This is the interventricular sulcus, and you can see the blood vessels running down in that area. The left anterior descending artery would be running down this sulcus, for example. On top, we have the atria. This would be the left atrium. If you've ever wondered what an oracle is, I can grab and pinch this. That's the oracle of the left atrium. The importance of that is there are little cavities inside of the oracles, and if somebody has atrial fib, the blood can become stagnant inside of the cavities of the auricles and coagulate and lead to emboli that can travel and cause strokes or pulmonary emboli. On the other side, the right side, I have the right atrium. This one's been cut open a bit, as you can see there. So this is right atrium, left atrium, left ventricle and right ventricles over here. This big vessel coming off the front is the pulmonary trunk, and then behind it is the aorta. And grossly from the outside, that's pretty much everything we can kind of see. Um, one neat thing to see when you look at a real heart is to look straight down the apex. This pointed part is the apex. At the other end, where all the vessels are going in and out, that's the base. If we look straight on at the apex, you can see a kind of a spiral, kind of spirals in this direction. Um, the heart, when it actually contracts, kind of contracts in a spiral because of that. And apparently that makes it more efficient. Um, the reason that it's spiral like that is developmental. The heart develops initially as a single tube, and then that tube twists on itself as it develops and the chambers develop and the valves develop. It's very neat to see. There are other YouTube videos showing development of the heart, and they're interesting to watch. Um, let's do a section of this heart. So again, I'm looking at the front of the heart. I'm going to turn it this way and grab my, I call it my Friday the 13th knife, um, and start cutting straight down, doing a frontal section starting at the apex being very careful to stop when I get close to my hand, flip it over, and continue that cut. Now I've got the front and back of the heart opened, and you can see the two chambers of the ventricles on the bottom and the chambers of the atria on top. When you've got a dissected heart such as this, the way to know whether you're dealing with left or right is to look at the outside walls. The left side is going to have a thicker myocardium, a thicker middle layer. The reason the left ventricle has that thicker or more muscle is that this side of the heart is pushing blood out to the body. It's got to push that blood a longer distance. It's got farther to go, many more blood vessels to service, so there's more strength coming from the left side of the heart therefore more muscle mass. The right side of the heart is pushing blood to the lungs, so it doesn't need as much muscle. It's just pushing it over here to the lungs on either side. It doesn't need as much force. So this is the left side, this is the left ventricle. Up here, therefore, is the left atrium. Over here we have the right ventricle, and you can see a bit of the right atrium here. Most of it, though, is, has ended up on the other side of the heart. 
other structures I can point to while we're here. You can see the leaflets to the left atrioventricular valve, also known as the bicuspid valve or mitral valve. And you can see these little strings that attach the leaflets. They're called chordae tendinae. The chordae tendinae attach to pieces of muscle on the ventricular wall, and those pieces of muscle are kind of thrust upward because they're constantly being pulled on by the chordae tendinae. Those are called papillary muscle. Inside of the atria, you can see these pieces or interesting convolutions of muscle. And if I can find a better example, let's see. Not really. This is probably the best one. You can kind of see how it looks like somebody ran a comb over this so that all of the striations of muscle go in one direction. This one's not perfect, but they're kind of going in one direction. Um, that's pectinate muscle. And then trabeculae carniae is found down deep in the ventricles, and it's a similar structure of kind of convoluted uh, pieces of muscle going out into the ventricle. You can see going from the left ventricle, when this ventricle contracts, it's going to cause this left atrioventricular valve to close. The pressure is going to go back against the leaflets and they're going to close. The blood, therefore, is going to be shunted up here through the semilunar valve of the aorta or aortic semilunar valve. And here's an aortic semilunar valve leaflet here. Through the aortic semilunar valve and into the aorta. So if you're looking at a gross dissection like this during an exam, the way to know what vessel this is is to follow the blood flow and know well that blood flow through the heart. And you can figure out which vessel it is. A little bit of trabeculae carniae in the right ventricle. Um, let's look at the other side and see if there's anything more interesting. Um, again, you have, this is the left AV, excuse me, yeah, that's left AV valve because we're on the left side of the heart, the thickness of the wall. Nice leaflet to the left AV valve. Nice chordae tendinae, the strings there. This is left atrium. And that's about it for this one. Let me bring it down another section. Um, you could imagine if I bring another fresh heart into view, if I were to take the knife and cut this way so that I was creating a transverse section of the heart, I would be able to see the ventricles in another way. And here's an apex from another heart where that kind of cut was made. And if we look down at the ventricles here, you can see the left ventricle here, again, because it has a thicker wall, and notice that the left ventricular wall is very round all the way around. The right ventricle is over here. And the right ventricle has this kind of curved shape following the side of the left ventricle. And it's got, again, a thinner wall on the outside. I like to do a little section, kind of a serial section looking like this. Um, this was a bit high up. You can see a little bit of the leaflet for the left AV valve up here inside of the left ventricle on this side. But again, this is left ventricle and you know it's left because of the thick wall. The right ventricle is over here, thin wall. I did one other dissection of a heart before starting this video. And what I basically did was to cut off the top of the heart so that we could look at the arrangement of the valves. So you're looking down at the top of a heart where the base has been cut off. We can see now down into, um, oops, down into the left ventricle, and I'm or I had to orient myself. If you look at the front of the heart again, this larger area that goes down into the apex is the left side. Therefore, this is the opening to that left ventricle. And you can see the leaflets of the left AV valve or bicuspid valve here. 
This large vessel on top here is the aorta. And if you look down in there, you can see the aortic semilunar valve leaflets. Another interesting structure that I can see here now, and let me see if I can pull off the glove and uh, turn off or turn on my autofocus so that it comes into focus when I bring it up. <laughs> and then I want to put another glove on. Um, if we look down into the aorta, again, nice and up close, you can see those leaflets to the semilunar valves. And one of the things I do during class usually is if I have one that's easy to see like this, I put some water in there that cause those leaflets to close so that you can visualize what they look like closed. You can also see the opening to the pulmonary trunk, and there's a valve leaflet there for the pulmonary semilunar valves. On the other side, we have the opening to the right ventricle over here. And if we look deep in there, we can see the leaflets of the left, or excuse me, the right atrioventricular valve or tricuspid valve. So those are structures looking down at the base of the heart with the top of the heart removed. You can make out. Notice that compared to the pictures that you usually have in your textbooks, um, the heart is a very three-dimensional structure, and it's difficult in a two-dimensional image to capture all of this anatomy, because if I put it in two dimensions like this and tried to show you all the valves, as you can see, the pulmonary semilunar valve is right in front of the aortic semilunar valve. So um, usually in the textbooks, they pull the aortic valve down so you can see it, or they have it go up higher so you can see it, at, because they're actually in line with each other, making it a bit difficult. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you, just because I found it very interesting today when we were doing our lab, here's that a nice, fresh, normal pig's heart. And I'll bring it up close so you can see it. It's got a nice, smooth surface on it. Um, this outer part of the heart is the epicardium. I'll do a little bit of anatomy before I move on because I just realized I didn't do the layers of the uh, heart, the three layers. So that's the outside, so that would be epicardium. I'm going to pull this serial section back up again. And again, here's left ventricle and right ventricle. Um, the middle layer, where the muscle mass really is, that's the myocardium, the middle layer. There's the epicardium on the outside, also known as visceral pericardium. And then on the inside is endocardium, this really slick, it's very, very slippery, this layer of tissue on the inside of the heart. And keep in mind, the type of uh, tissue that we see here is simple squamous endothelium. It's the same single layer of epithelial cells that line the entire vascular system, including the heart. And if the blood sees anything other than this simple squamous endothelium, the blood tends to clot. Here's the other section, and actually let me bring out the, because usually when I ask this on a test, I ask on this kind of section. Um, outside is epicardium or visceral pericardium. The middle layer is myocardium. And then the inside, if, you, if you're asked for tissue layer in here, this is endocardium. Um, interventricular septum, I don't think I mentioned before, but this is the separation between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. So that's interventricular septum right there. There is a septum between the two atria. It's going to be a bit hard to visualize on this heart, but I'm basically I'm putting my fingers inside of the two atria and there's tissue between my fingers. That would be the atrial septa. So anyway, back to what I wanted to show you in terms of something interesting, and if anybody out there knows what this is, please let me know. Um, but here's a nice, nice, smooth, normal surface of a little pig's heart. And let me show you the abnormal one. This pig's heart, I'm not sure if it's larger because the animal was larger, because that certainly could be, but you can see it's got some abnormal tissue on the surface. It's got these, like, these little strands of... Uh, what seem like kind of 
dense connective tissue. It's not pericardial sac because I'd be able to pull it up and off of the heart. It's not that. It's just some abnormal kind of scar looking tissue that developed around this pig's heart. I believe um, that this is a pericarditis that causes this kind of thing. But if anybody out there knows better, please let me know. And I think that's all I really wanted to show you for anatomy of the piggy heart. As always, if there are any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. And thank you once again for watching.